Sarah has her own bookkeeping firm and her own coaching classes. And I asked her to join on our webinar today so she can tell us how automating her firm really helped her grow her revenue and save a lot of time and slash costs. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about a world where we don't have to spend time on sending invoices and writing proposals and chasing clients to get paid, just a world where we all do great work and get paid instantly without all the hassle around it. Um, and before we get started, I'll just say about Sarah, because if there's anything I've learned about Sarah is that she's super, super humble. So actually, um, I met Sarah, so I'm Talia from Anchor, by the way, if uh, if we don't know each other, it's great to be here, and Anchor is a billing automation platform, um, and I met Sarah because she became an Anchor user, and we were in touch online and chatting, and then we met for the first time a couple of months ago at Scaling New Heights face-to-face, -face, and ever since, we've hit it off, and we're best friends, and everything Sarah tells me is, is so inspiring, and I learned so much from her and that's why I wanted her to join us here today um so because I told you because she's really humble I'll just say that Sarah only started um bookkeeping in her bookkeeping firm three years ago she didn't know anything about bookkeeping beforehand she'll tell you all about it and within her first year she um hit six uh six figures in revenue which was amazing and uh because she reached that success she's um, kindly always shares her insights within her community and in different communities she's active in. And she also has um, a coaching program, which is always sold out. So if you can get into the next coaching program, good on you, um, where she teaches bookkeepers how to take her reven their revenue from zero to 10K in monthly revenue. And literally everyone who goes through their, her program succeeds. So but she would never tell you that because she's so humble. So we have a real superstar here with us today um, to share her insights. So Sarah, tell everyone, tell us your story. Introduce yourself. Tell us your story um, and give us a little taste of what we can expect today. Sure. So I'm Sarah Gooden. Um, uh, yes, I, I was in automotive service for 15 years. Yeah, repaired vehicles, nothing like bookkeeping, totally not related. Uh, we did a huge move across the country and uh, we decided, do I really wanna go back to 50 hours a week? I saw an ad online for a course where I could work from home. I had no idea what a bookkeeper was. That was almost three years ago now. So I learned what it was, started a business uh, just shy of maybe two and a half years ago. Um, but yeah, my first year in business, full year in business, I was able to uh, exceed that $100,000. Uh, but I, um, over the last two and a half years, I've shared everything I've learned with tons of other bookkeepers um, in coaching calls and just helping. I love the community. So I'm always helping people in the community. Um, and uh, I met Talia at QuickBooks Connect, fell in love with Anchor. I use it in my business. It's really helped. So I'm excited today to talk about how I use it in my business and to help you guys learn what Anchor actually is. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about how you can get paid effortlessly, basically without all the hassle of billing clients, chasing clients, not knowing when you'll get paid for the work you're, you've done. And if you're unfamiliar with Anchor, I'll just give you a very, very quick high level before we jump in and then we'll jump into it. So basically Anchor, as I said, we're a billing automation platform. We automate the entire process from sending a proposal to your client through the automated invoicing, auto charging your clients, and reconciling everything with you with our QuickBook for you with our QuickBooks integration. So basically what happens is Today, what happens when we start working with a client is we'll send them a proposal, they'll sign the proposal, we'll start working together. Once we've done the work, we'll send them the invoice. We won't hear from them for a few days. We'll see that the money hasn't come in yet. Then we'll call them and we'll be like, hey, remember I sent you the invoice, what's going on with that? And they'll be like, oh, you know what? I've been super busy, I'll pay you ASAP, don't worry, I'm good for it. 
which is great, but it's still, you know, hurting our cash flow in the firm because we need that money to grow, to pay our employees, to pay our bills. So um, that happens the whole time. Uh, that's called late payments. And um, it, it happens with 97% of the payments. So 97% of the payments are late in firms. And for small businesses, small to medium businesses, not getting paid and not having your revenue certainty is very detrimental because if you don't know when you're gonna get paid for your work, you don't know how much you can invest in growth or in other business um, you know, ventures. So, um, so that's basically how Anchor started is we tried to solve the late payment issue and diving into it, our CEO and founder, Rome, he just, when he dives into research for something, he goes, all the way back before the world even exists. And he researched billing to the, you know, to the beginning of times and and realized the way billing is done is completely broken. And we understood that to automate getting paid, you need to start before the billing even starts at the proposal um, stage because getting paid starts at day one, right? So basically what Anchor does is it's a free platform. It will give you, um, Basically, you, you send a proposal to your client. In that proposal, you add in the services, how much it's going to cost, the billing due date, all the terms and conditions your client needs to know and that you usually already discussed over the phone with them. The client receives that proposal. They can access it from their phone, from anywhere. Basically, they read through it. It's a very, very bottom line first, so very SaaS experience. Um, so that they know exactly what they're getting and don't need to scroll through all the terms and legals to see what they're getting. So they see it, they sign it, they agree, the screen flips, they're asked to add in their payment information, they can add in ACH or credit card, um, they add in the payment information, and that's it. Basically, the process is done. On the billing due date, uh, invoices automatically sent to your client and charges your client's pre-approved payment method, and reconcile and, and obviously transfer to your bank account uh, and everything is reconciled and you can see everything in, in your general ledger. So that's a very, very high level explanation of Anchor and how it works. So basically we just ensure that the collection is done on day one and then everything else is automated. And in terms of the pricing models we support, we support any pricing model. So like it doesn't matter whether, you know, you're, you you charge on a recurring basis or on an hourly basis or per unit or whatever type of pricing model you work with, even the subscription model, or if you have packages, we automate everything. Um, so that's a high level of Anchor and how it works. And I know Sarah will probably share some of her insights later, but let's get started with this webinar and talk about proposals and the fact that um, um, you know, billing starts on day one. And since you flipped your process, uh, Sarah, and started using Anchor, like what have you seen since you started using billing and payment automation? What results have you experienced in your firm? And tell us a little like numbers, if you can share and insights. Yeah. So real quick, right before that, I just want to say that like as bookkeepers, what have we been doing forever? The original model was um, we write a proposal up in maybe a PDF. You have a sheet at the back that says ACH. We literally collected bank information that we would then type into QuickBooks, type it all out, go from there, right? It took maybe hours to build that out. Then there's things like, could we use um, like a, an e-signature platform? But at the same time, we're still collecting that ACH to put in. You could send an invoice and then get payment and then hope every month they paid. Um, and so with Anchor, you can build in the different um, items that you like to sell. Like, I'll just give you some examples to speed it up. I have a monthly client, a weekly, a quarterly. I have things like um, a cleanup or a catch up, right? So you can automatically have your things there. So you're not building that out every time you have to do it. Um, then, um, right, the your proposal's there, you're sending a proposal, a payment, all in one thing. So it's easier for the client too. The client's not confused. Do I sign this? Do I pay here? How does it all look? It's very easy for the client. So 
for my firm specifically, we save hours not doing paperwork over and over again. Everything's preset. I type in first name, last name, email address, pick the item I want, um, add in some specific details to that client. My contract's already built in. Um, click a few things, send it. The client gets a super easy version. They send it right back. While I'm on the call, I can send it. It takes less than five minutes. Um, and then all they do is put their payment method and continue. So, right, if you charge $75 to $100 an hour, uh, you're saving two hours sending a proposal. Look how much money just in that you're making. Plus, if you were taking the long process, the longer you take to get the information to the client, the less likely they are to sign up and pay um, the fizzle. So um, you make a lot more in that too because you're immediately getting things out to them. So that's another huge saver for us at our firm. How much time do you think like you've saved on proposals? Like how much time were you spending on proposals? How long do proposals take you now? How much time were you spending on like following up with clients about getting paid? How much time are you spending out? Like give us a little more understanding to like what what your day looks like now as opposed to what you used to do before any billing automation. Yeah, I think just straight off the bat, I probably saved two hours. I'm not going into three separate programs, building out an invoice, a proposal, um, collecting ACH, putting it in. I'm not following up the customer. Hey, did you get it? I'm not following up like Right. I got the signature, but not the payment. I got the payment, but not the signature. So at least two, two hours off the initial, but then every month. Um, two hours per proposal you're saving now? Per, or per, per client. Yeah. Per client, um, initial client. And then on the monthly basis, uh, we're not ever chasing down payments. All the payments are locked in. Uh, so we don't have to do any of that follow-up at all. Everything just happens. So wow, um, monthly, sense. yeah, monthly, you could potentially be saving even more month over month, but just that initial two hours of documentation up front has been eliminated per client. But like if you're billing $100 an hour, that's $200 yeah. per client. Yeah, $200 per, per client right there. That's plus awesome. it's so, yeah, plus it's so instantaneous. You're still there in the excitement of the not a sales call, but a sales call. And so they sign right there on the call. Hey, did you get the email? Yes, I did. They put in the information. You get a essentially a cha-ching, cha-ching, like within five minutes. Right. And we're we're diving right into like our conversation about why it's so important to deliver proposals fast to clients. But before I'm just taking you a step back and I and yep. today like the conversation is not necessarily focused about anchor because any bill end to end billing automation platform will help you basically slash costs and increase revenue a you're slashing costs by not paying for multiple softwares that do the same because you have everything end to end b you're slashing costs on time spent or on manpower spent on the billing processes or the uh, proposal so processes and you're also increasing your revenue because you can use that time to grow your business or to do more billable, you know, work for your clients, which is um, really nice. So I I did, um, I did have a question for you, but have you seen any revenue increase in terms of like new business you've been able to produce since you've been using billing automation or not really? Um, I, um, I know it saves me a lot of time. I know I get jobs signed quicker. Um, so I know that all works. Um, and are you spending that time on like doing more work? Like how are you spending this? Yeah, effort? it allows me to spend more time marketing and finding those more clients to get to the next step. Uh, mm -hmm. So it just frees up the time to find more clients and fill more clients in there. Yeah. Okay. So automation, right? Yeah. But automation is like, We've been lectured on automation for the past five years and no, and there's so many tools out there and you don't always know what to choose, right? Everyone's telling you they're the next best thing since sliced bread. So what are you looking at when you look for automation tools? Like what's important for you? Uh, and share some of your success with us because obviously yeah. you did something right to get to six figures within 12 months of not knowing what bookkeeping was. Yeah. In it beforehand. So like, yeah, 
how does automation help you or how has it helped you through your journey? What helps you be successful? Yeah, so a huge thing is keep it simple, right? The more complex, the more time you spend researching this software, this software, it just gets out of hand. So when I look at uh, automation, I used to have a software that had tons of automation, but then I just spent all my time setting up the automation and not doing the work, right? We should be doing income producing activities. So uh, my old one, um, it had a lot of automations, but I still had to go in there and adjust things. And another time saver I didn't say that I do like about Anchor is that um, it does more automation in the back end. So it literally, um, I know I'm jumping ahead, but because it does the invoice, the payment, the deposit, my old system, even though it automated everything, I would still have to do that part in the system and match it up. So this creates just that more automation. So I guess the idea is to keep it simple. You could have a system that does a ton of automation, but then you spend countless hours setting up that system in the first place. This just requires no setup. So the more things I could create an SOP for it and take down to the simplest, simplest form, the more work we get done, the more things we finish, um, and then we all make more money at the end of the day. And a lot of those systems that have so much automation built in are really, really expensive. They sound great, but you spend 100 hours setting it up, you spend $150 a month, and really you just wasted more time than you made in the long run. I love that what guides you is keeping it simple. And I think that brings us to the our next topic, which is proposals. And if there's something like Sarah loves talking about is the anchor proposals. But I think what is really important to remember when we send when 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 a client reaches out and wants to work with us, it's it's our job to close that as fast as possible, right? While providing them value and being very clear and what they're getting and while protecting ourselves legally and making sure that you know we're going to be working with a client that we want to work with and i think that's when we thought of like what would the anchor proposals look like we look around us um and there's the traditional proposals right that they're pdf and they're long and you have all the legal first and everything first but what we really looked at is how everyone behaves in the real world right so when i go um, and want to buy something online. So say I'm buying a computer screen online. What I want to see is how much it costs, what it comes with, great, right, done. And I think that it's important to provide your clients with a proposal that is very simple for them to understand what they're getting to because, because that will enhance their pace of them um, signing your deal. And basically, if we work according to the rule of time kills all deals, you need to speak to the client, get a proposal fast to them, make sure they sign it fast while they're still really excited about the conversation you just had together. And, um, and then you can just, you know, collect the payment, but then you're set, right? So it's about you closing that deal and not letting time or unclarity or an accessibility. I sometimes I get proposals from people and they're only accessible on, on desktop. Like I need to open my laptop, but if I'm on my phone or I'm on the way and someone sends me a proposal that I can look at through my mobile and just like sign quickly and give it my approval, that's definitely gonna get my, gonna get signed faster from my end. Otherwise, it, you know, otherwise I leave it to the next day when I'm back in the office again, and that's not getting signed for a few days now. You know what I mean? So it's about making it um, accessible. To, and I know, Sarah, you wanted to talk about uh, proposals a lot. And I also know uh, Moses is raising his hand. Uh, should we take a question? One sec, sure. let's. All right, let's see if I know how to do this. Hi, Moses, we can hear you. Hey, Moses. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Talia. Um, I think uh, Sarah, if she knew that I was on the call, she probably also knew that I'd be asking a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you, me you mentioned um, the ease of preparing proposals. I, I recently became aware of uh, uh, 
a different software that uh, works proposals as you're on a call with a client. And you can actually work on the proposal as your client is answering your questions. And by the end of the call, uh, the software facilitates the ability to send the proposal immediately. Does Anchor work similarly? So Sarah, do you want to take everyone through like how you take calls and during your introductory calls, like what you do with the proposals? And yeah, then so we can also demo what an Anchor proposal looks like if you have a minute to do that. Yeah, I can definitely walk you through one. Um, I know exactly what you're you're asking. Can you do it? So um, could you? Yes, you could have a template in there. You could form the pricing as you go. You can set that up. There's packages. There's different things you can set up so you can do very similar once you set it up. But what I, I just want to say is that if you try to do one on a call and answer the questions you can and go through the things, you could miss really important things in the books. Um, I've tried that method before in the past, right? We're all open to try new things. Um, and I've definitely underquoted because I didn't take the time to look in the books and find those additional items that are hiding in the background. Um, so yes, you could definitely set up something so that does work uh, for you. But yeah, you could set up Anchor very similar as well. So why don't you, I think what we, what as I said, what we did is we tried to make the Anchor proposals um, very simple also for the bookkeeper setting them up, but also for the client receiving them. Um, so it's completely understood. Um, should we show an example of, of what it looks like to set up an Anchor proposal? Write yes in the chat if you're interested, because, because right now it's me and Sarah <laughs> and Moses who asked the question. Thank you, Moses. So Sarah, do you want to share your screen and show us what, um, what that would look like? Okay, Sarah left. <laughs> that's okay no worries so I hope she'll be back in a second I hope she's okay okay so she brought up she brought up a very good point forgive me for interrupting you Talia she did bring up a very good point and that is that you're bound to catch uh, potentially additional work that needs to be uh, billed for uh, and I, I didn't think of that um, yeah so thank you again my dear Sarah yeah. Sorry about I, that. Someone banged on my door. Sorry, okay. how do you about that? We love the neighbors. Pull them in. But I think to your point, Mo Moses, and to your point, Sarah, you know, in a business, change is the only constant, and it's going to happen the whole time. And what what's really cool about Anchor and how we built it is that it's dynamic. So when you start working with a client, you send them a proposal, they get it signed, that's all set, great. But what happens now is usually a client will need something in the middle of the month, right? Or you'll discover you didn't quote them correctly. So up to now, um, an agreement, you would have to like reopen that agreement, reopen negotiations, get them to sign it again. But what we did with Anchor to make it super dynamic and flexible is if a client calls you in the middle of the month, you have a phone call with them, you do, you agree and what you agree to work on together. And then you just go into Anchor, you add that service from your service library to that client's um, bill, the client will get a notification, they'll approve it, they'll sign it, and that will just be added on to their um, to their upcoming invoice, whether it's a one-time or if recurring, it's just added on to their agreement, right? So your proposals are very dynamic, they can always be changed, but also keep note that you need client approvals to add extra payments, uh, usually because it's important that the client trusts you in the system as well. The client has full transparency to all the logs and changes you guys agreed on on the deal. So if a question ever comes back, you can always send them to their anchor account and be like, here's what you signed for. You know, so that's also very um, important when when it talks about like client relationship. We want to reduce friction. And we want to be very transparent so the client knows they can trust us. So Sarah, I know I interrupted you. 
Go, go ahead, Sarah, show us. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things that um, have to do with what you said. First, um, when you said we're not, um, right, you wanna go online and see a price and it transparent just to step back. Um, is that we're not competing against other bookkeepers. We're competing against business in general. So the quicker we can have things, the better. Um, I do like that you can update and send additional on their proposal, but on that initial, you want to get as close as you can. If you told someone it's 2000 and you come back just, oh, it's really 4,000, could be really uncomfortable to the client and to you. So that's why on the call, it's a little bit scary. But what's nice is just like you said, it's dynamic. So, hey, we're going a monthly. Hey, we have this one-time thing you want us to catch up. Hey, you've got a late fee. You can update it. And some of you guys, like me, if you work with tradesmen or other people, they never see their computer. They're out mowing the lawns all day. They don't have a computer. They can get it right to their phone. They can swipe, yes, we're good on the deal. Yes, we're good to go monthly. Yes, we're good to add in 250 for this extra project I want you to add on. So it just makes it really dynamic that you can add whenever, wherever. And they don't have to adjust anything, right? Once the payment's set, they're good to go. Very easy. Awesome. So Lexi, Lexi, I think everyone's excited to see how you set up or how you send a proposal. So what are we going to send a proposal for today? I am going to send a cleanup proposal on my other screen. So I'm going to share and make it super easy for you. Let's see, share screen. Okay, can you all see my anchor here? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So on here, you'll get an easy dashboard, gives you lots of information. To set a breaker, it's very quick. Um, what I like, kind of going back to what Moses said, is you can build in all your services. They do come with a bunch of services in here that you can use. You can update to what you like and go from there. What I liked, I took out a bunch and just left it the things that I regularly use so that it was quick and easy for me to pick and choose what I have. If you notice on here, what's really cool, what I mentioned before, is all of these sync right to QuickBooks. So you can literally map these things. For me, I wanna map all my cleanups to a cleanup account and all my monthly to a monthly account. So when I look at my profit and loss, it automatically goes to the right place. I can see what I'm looking at. You can build in what exactly is in each thing. And then you just have to slightly critique it, which I'll show you here in a moment. So um, let's see, go back to my dashboard just to start from the beginning. We're going to send an agreement. You could name it. So if you're doing a client, this is a project uh, setup. And then you can name the agreement a monthly if you change to that. I'm going to leave it blank. You don't have to have anything here. When you add a new contact, literally a new contact is easy as first name, last name, the company, email address. You can also add in a phone number for text features if you would like. Um, but I'm going to cancel that for now. I'm going to use my fake client, my favorite fake client, which is my son. So here he is, Wacka Wuggy Co. Uh, it's a video game uh, reference for him. We're going to do on acceptance. I'm going to go here and select a service from one of the ones I just showed you I had. We're going to say a 2022 cleanup, right? Because next month, if you're an S Corp and you did a... Uh, extension, you're due. You got two months if you're an LLC. So we'll practice with that. We're going to add that service. Once you've added your service, you can go here and edit. So I'm going to edit my service. I have a, an outline of a service here as a reminder for what I want. What I typically do is I do a QuickBooks review with a client. Here's my um, well, fake outline for a client. I just like to copy my scope because it's easy. I've already built it up. So I'm going to copy that right in here. Because I have it here, I literally can just paste. Here it is outlined, ready to go. Um, over here, I want to say since it's a project, I'm going to do a one time. 
if you have these services set up, these will be set for you. Um, but I always look through them just in case. One time, I'm going to do a fixed price. You could change this to per hour, per unit, a price range. You could do one time, right? You could see all the options here. Um, I'm going to say, right, I'm going to just go or off my Just template. before you, you go yeah. back and um, yeah. show the, I actually can't see Anchor now. I'm seeing your document, but I think what's really cool is even if you, if you go into the pricing options and yeah. you choose the, the range um, or the unit, you can always add a cap, which means um, you can decide with a client that up to 10 billable hours don't require their approval, but anything above 10, 10 hours will need to be pre-approved by them, right? Which means that you can go, go, go until you hit the 10 hour cap that's automatically charged. And then you'll just send them a notification that you need an extra few hours and they'll sign for it. So that's when you're setting up the pricing, just know you can do, you can work with caps, you can work with units, et cetera. Sorry for interrupting. No, that was perfect. I love that. Yeah, you could definitely do the range. Um, so you can see all that. That's brighter. Um, yep. So you could definitely do range. I love that feature. I have used that before. This example, we'll just go back to fixed price. I can't remember what our fake price was. Um, so say we have, right, twenty seven fifty. It's just random. Obviously, that would be a terrible price. Um, but you could have automatic agreement for the approval. So from there, we would just save it. And then we get down to uh, more information. You could add additional services. So if you were doing the cleanup and you knew the monthly fee, you could add another service, add the monthly here. For this example, I'm just gonna do the one. Payment setting. If you like to use the same setting all the time, you can go in the settings and adjust this. So you don't have to fix it every time. But right here, um, right, we always wanna start bill up front, right? Bill from day one. So bill up front. If it's monthly, you could select what day you would like the payment to come out. You can set the number of days, right? We wanna do upon receipt. Invoices, so then this will recap as a reminder. Invoices will be paid on the first of each month, paid in full in advance, processed immediately. Just recap so you read it over, that makes sense. You can define who pays the credit card, right? So if we were, um, ACH is always free to the client, but if they decide that they wanna pay credit card, they can pay the fee or you can choose to pay the fee. Since I have the option, I always let them pay. I've never had a client complain about paying credit card fees. If they did, I would probably cover it. Okay. Yeah, but I think the default though for most of our users and, and the way it's set up is that the credit card fee goes to the client because ACH is free. But a lot of times our clients want to pay uh, through credit cards so that they can gain the points or miles or whatever. Um, and that's totally up to them. But because we offer free ACH or you as the bookkeeper offer free ACH, um, it's usually fair enough that the clients... Um, um, can choose from uh, one of two options and then just, um, you know, cover the fee by themselves. So that's just what happens usually with most our uh, bookkeeping users. Exactly. That's how I leave it as well. Um, and then you could continue down here to agreement settings. Um, Anchor is nice enough to have a great terms and conditions. So I stick with theirs. But if you would like, you can actually build in your own terms and conditions. All you would do is put them on a PDF um, and then you would upload the PDF. You could use it there. Um, you can enable, you can check into these. You can enable auto approved notice in advance um, and request account and access these features. I usually leave them off unless there's a reason I need to have them on. You can also, sorry about that. You can also add in notes here. So if you use your, if you use this agreement, but you want to add additional notes, you can, or you use your, and this client has additional things. This is nice. You can go ahead and add those there. So here's what we have. So we're going to send a proposal to um, our client, Xavier Gooden. 
our new client onboard template. So you can build in templates for what you want the email to look like. So this example, they give you a uh, one you would use. You could change this if you want, but we're just gonna go ahead and, and send the proposal like it is. And then I'll show you on my screen. Uh, oh, sorry, you do get this pop-up, which is nice. And sometimes you just like to send an email saying, hey, here's the proposal I talked about. You could send it to them twice. If you met on a specific place, you can send it there also. It's nice to give it to them two ways. Let me just open on my other side so you can see the client view. Okay, and while Sarah's uh, showing us our client view, I will say that um, many times um, a lot of our clients will copy the link and they'll, you know, send the link to the proposal via text message even and be like, you know, this is what we just discussed. So make sure that you get them wherever you can, because don't forget that time kills all deals. Get that proposal signed, guys. Exactly. Time kills all proposals. <laughs> so here you go. I just pulled up the email. Uh, so, right, they'll see it. What I like is that the email um, does show it's from you. Um, sometimes if you have another platform that you send it through, it doesn't show you. So it's confusing to the client. Um, so it does say your name here. Here's the email you just saw. And then right here, what you didn't see is what's next. Review it, add a payment method, and approve the agreement. So you just review. We'll actually look at it so we can see that it's always nice to see what the client gets to see. So you're prepared for their version. It's really nice. Not only can you see it here, but they can see on their phone and it looks really nice on their phone as well. Uh, so review agreement. Here's the agreement. So here's the service. They'll see right here what it is for how much. If they click here, it'll actually open and you'll see all the notes I added, all the detail here. What I really love is they literally line edit out. So the client can say, I didn't understand or I didn't know, right? It's billed once, it's billed automatically on the agreement. It's paid automatically when processed. So if this is monthly, it would say, it'll bill every month on the first, right? So it's very clear to the client what they're getting. We're gonna go ahead and approve. Again, here is those line items. So they see exactly what they're getting. They can open the terms and conditions. This is what Anchor's terms and conditions look like. So you'll see those here. Um, and they can approve the terms. Take some right here. Here's that free ACH, or they can choose the credit card, the 2.9%. They just go here and connect their bank account, or they can go here and put their credit card information in. They connect their account, and then it takes them right to sign and approve. Again, all of this can be done on their phone or at their computer. I know we have lots of clients who don't wanna be near their computer, so this allows them to help them too. Um, if we go back to our side um, okay. on your dash, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah but, but that's really basically it. Like you send yep. them a proposal on, that's it. And, and like Moses, like yep. you said beforehand, if you know what the conversation is gonna be about, you can prepare a template, but with the service library, it's very easy to pull things in. There's also when you set up the service, you can um, add in a discount. You can also build different packages, right? So there's a lot of, uh, we work a lot with Ron Baker and we work with him so that the packaging is very clear. And then you can make a package and a plus package, right? So you can really customize it per client, or you can use a template that works for everyone. But that's it. Once that is signed and um, and you know delivered, the invoicing will happen automatically, and then the charges will obviously happen automatically, and you'll see everything in your QuickBooks. And Sarah showed you a little bit your dashboard. I won't ask you to share it again because it probably has like your information in it. But in your anchor dashboard, you'll basically see. Um, you know, how much, how much revenue is expected to come in, how much revenue you've collected, um, how many proposals you have pending. The really nice thing um, that we added to Anchor is that 
we'll do all the reminders and all the chasing for the clients for you. So if a client received a proposal and they haven't signed it, we'll automatically send them emails reminding that the proposal is waiting for them. Also on the invoice date, if there's a problem with the invoices, we'll ping, I don't know, if there's insufficient funds because there shouldn't be a problem charging your client. It happens automatically. But insufficient funds or the credit card expired, we notify your client automatically. And if it needs escalation, we'll let you know. But you can see everything from your dashboard and you get notifications uh, from your dashboard. And I see, I see uh, Lakeisha that said, I'm gonna save so much more time. I really hope so. That's the goal. And I, I can talk about like, um, uh, thank you, Sarah. I can talk about Anchor for days, but I will say that we built Anchor from our own needs. We were all service providers. We were all chasing clients for about late payments and clients, they really wanna pay you. But the way the process is now, it sends them to work, right? So we're sending them invoices and then they need to look at that invoice, verify if it's compliant and if it matches what you agreed on. If there's a charge that they don't remember speaking about with you, that's gonna make the payment delayed. So we're sending them to do research to make sure that you didn't make any errors on your invoices. And that's what a lot of times uh, causes late payments. and they basically have to take action to pay you. But with Anchor, they're automatically opted into paying you and they'll have to take action to not pay you. And that's the nice thing about it. And by that, we just killed mo most of your late payments because research so shows that most of your clients, they really wanna pay you. They just have a lot on their plate. They also have a busy day. And sometimes your invoice, just finds it on the bottom of their to-do list. So if it's automated, that's one less task for them as well. Um, so, and and yeah, that's basically the story of Anchor. And that's why we love using it. I only like, I, I obviously, I work in the marketing department, but every time someone wants me to sponsor something for them, I'm like, just send me an Anchor agreement because I don't wanna go through the process of having to go to my finance team, approving things with them, getting it paid, like going through legal. It's just a hassle. There's a lot of process there. So I'm just like, let's just anchor it for me. I'll review it quickly. I'll approve it. And I know it's dealt with. And then that's for me, for the client uh, side. All right, so that's um, that's how the anchor uh, proposal part works. I just wanted to say right past that, um, yes. Uh, so on your dashboard, it just says, Hey, it lets you know they signed. So, right. You know, you could get to work. It says, um, right. They've collected the money. So, you know, you can get to work. Um, and then the next part is that in your QuickBooks, it actually, I know I, I hinted at this before, but it makes the, uh, invoice for you. It, uh, maps it correctly. It does a payment. And then it does a deposit. So it's just the $5 fee. It adds that for you to the deposit. So in your bank feed, if you're doing it the old fashioned way, you could just match, but Anchor has it set up where you can uh, literally just have it do itself. So it matches itself uh, and then everything goes through. So it goes right through your bank feed without even you having to do anything. So that's why I was saying it's even easier than QuickBooks because in QuickBooks, you still Lakeisha, have to do Your stuff. comments are killing me. Yeah. Like Lakeisha, <laughs> I love, keep yeah. doing what you're doing. You're giving me so much energy. But yeah, and that touches on the pricing. So there is no subscription fee on Anchor. It doesn't matter to us if you build your client $5,000 or $2,000. It's a $5 set fee. If you're using ACH, it's free. If you're using credit card, it's a 2.9% uh, fee, which hopefully your client will pay. Really ask your clients to cover those fees for you. That's a big burden on you if you've given them a free um a free option um that's it it's five dollars it's it's super simple there's no questions asked um so that's the anchor pricing and i did want to go back for a second about the to talk about the revenue leakage we touched a bit about today with moses's question so Revenue leakage is all those times that a client called us mid-month and needed something and we wrote it on a note somewhere 
but the person doing the billing might be someone else on our team or we misplaced the note and we just didn't add it to the next invoice, right? So if you have someone doing the invoicing for you, there's if, if you don't transfer that information, it won't get onto the invoice. If you are doing your own invoicing, you will forget things. You're human. Okay. So, and revenue leakage is, uh, I think the research shows it, it costs firm up firms about up to 4.6% of your top line. Bottom line, that can be 25 to 30% of your bottom line. And it's it's just all the times you forgot to bill your client and then even the times like maybe you agreed that you'll do one price one year and then the price will go up, but then you forgot to increase the price and now you feel bad about it because it will cause friction or something like that. That's all revenue leakage. It's costing you a lot of money. And by having the dynamic agreement on Anchor, every time you have a conversation with your client, just go into Anchor, add that on for them. They will approve it and it will be added to their next bill if you need a price increase for the next year, that can be set up as well. Like everything can be done on Anchor for you. And that will help you with just maximizing the money you've been working for anyway. Um, the revenue leakage is, it's it takes a toll on people. So just pay attention to the times you're forgetting to do things and make sure just to add it on um, to the agreement and it will just happen automatically. Okay. Yeah. Um, just from you, our, from the bookkeeper yeah. side of you, right. Who in here has on their uh, contract. And if you don't, you need to add this is that right. If you stop giving us documents for two or three months, and then you want us to get you caught back up, there's an additional fee, right. For not doing your part of the deal. Um, I know we talked about times, sorry, 1099s, but we also talk about like what else, what else do we have fees? The yearly increase. You don't need to write a whole new contract. You literally just say, here's the new price we talked about or the new year, here it is. And then they go ahead and they just swipe with their thumb. They don't have to redo an agreement. They don't have to redo their pricing. They don't have to do any of that. It's really, really nice. It's so simple. Yeah, it's just like adding stuff to their packages. The agreement is the base and just you're adding, you know, you're just adding services to their service cart, I guess we'll call it, right? Um, and that's how a relationship should should be. And that's how, you know, the real world behaves with Netflix or with, I don't know, um, Amazon Prime. You're just adding things to your cart and they get billed. There's no agreement that needs to be signed again and the same way here like if if as bookkeepers and service providers we change the way we think about the service we're giving and the way we bill for it then our life will be much easier and we'll be richer <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool so I know we have uh 10 minutes left for the webinar and I do want to leave some time for Q and A. Um, Anything else you feel we didn't discuss today, Sarah? Anything we left out? I don't I don't think so. I think we touched on a lot of things, um, but I would love to hear if anyone has any questions that I could help answer um, from a bookkeeper's perspective. What things do we run into that this might solve um, just as far as proposals in general and helping collect payment in a timely manner on automation? Right. So while you're writing up all the questions, I'm sure everyone has a ton of questions. Guys, come on, be engaged. Give us some questions. Um, I'll just say that one of the things that I was really inspired by you, Sarah, is when we were preparing and going through what we would talk about um, in this webinar, I asked you, like, how did you do it? How did you become so successful? And you said, I just automate whatever I can and out I outsource whatever I can. So like maybe give us a minute about like yeah how you stay so efficient and how you've built an amazing business so fast. Yeah, so one of the big things is of course keep it simple. How can I make everything simple? And I laid out all the tap right after I learned everything we should do in our business, I laid out all the tasks. What things do I love doing? What things do I hate doing? Uh, and then I hired someone. Um, to join me to take on all the things I don't like. Um, or I'm not the 
the best at, right? I can't do everything, but we shouldn't do everything, right? We're business owners. We have a lot on our plates. So um, it's definitely, I laid out all the things I want to do. I love business. I love talking to people. I love doing all of those things. So what I did is I hired someone who had a lot of years of bookkeeping experience um, to help me do a lot of the bookkeeping so I could do the sales and marketing, the finishing things up. Um, but other people, right, they might like to just be in the books forever and not talk to anyone, right? So um, my always suggestion is find your opposite uh, and contract that piece first. Um, and so you get a lot more done in your business. Um, and by contracting, I like contracting, is you won't lose money, right? So you're charging and then you're paying out for the work that you need done. Um, uh, yeah, are you willing to share how many employees and contractors you work with? So currently I have two. I have a senior accountant now. I've moved up to a senior accountant uh, and I call her project manager. She does bookkeeping and she manages uh, the basically an onboarding specialist, um, admin, project management. Um, so yeah, so find your opposite. Uh, and then the two of you can work together or a third, you could knock out a bunch of work and you're much happier when you're doing your zone of genius, what you're best at. Um, and then the other person, they're doing what they're best at. And then just keeping everything simple. And the more that you can set up like SOPs, quicker everything will go because you follow the same process every time. That's like my, my life motto is just do what you're best at and what you enjoy and I yeah. use that a lot with my husband when I want to like, <laughs> but, but I'll be like, honey, I, you know what, the cooking, it's not my best, it's not my best trade. Let's just outsource it. But seriously, I think in a business, it's, it's all about if you can outsource whatever you can. And I think a lot of times you'll find that outsourcing things is cheaper than you spending your own time on it because you as the business owner, you're the most valuable, your time is the most valuable. And your time is needed for the growth things and for the revenue producing things. So if even if you can do the work, but if there's someone that can do it for cheaper, let them do it. And just like focus yeah. on the growth, growth, growth. I did see a question about how you can sign up to Anchor. So again, signing up to Anchor is free. Uh, you don't need anything in order to sign up. It's sayanchor.com. The only time we'll charge you is when, uh, if you get paid through Anchor, it will cost you $5, no matter how um, how high your invoice is, don't worry about that. Um, and if you wanna speak to um, someone on our success team, then just reach out, you'll get a welcome email, you can book a demo, they'll take you through it. And I also added an extra $70 in credit. So if you sign up to Anchor from this webinar, um, just email me. I'm Talia at say, at say anchor.com or let us know through any of the emails um, you get from us that you came through this webinar and we'll just add $70 in credit to your Anchor account so you can play around with things and just um, have an easy start. I think it's simple to get started, right? Right, Sarah? What, what would you say? It was like onboarding to Anchor and adopting it. How long did that take you? Honestly, I know I always exaggerate, but I, I was going to say five minutes, but I would say 10 minutes or less. The longest part was just adding your bank information that it gets deposited to, right? The rest That's is your name, like your address, your business name. It's super simple. Um, and a lot of the things, as you use each service, you set each mapping. So there's not, there's not even any upfront setup either. It goes very, very quickly. Um, can I share the story about how we met? I don't know. What are you going to share? Okay, sure, go go for it. Oh yeah, I do remember how we met, okay. So you guys are getting a $70 credit. I happened to stumble upon them at uh, QuickBooks Connect and they didn't have a booth yet. So they said, hey, here's a $5 chip to go up to a hotel room. The girl I was with thought that was very shady, but it was the best investment I made to go up to a hotel room because I met them, learned this great service. So I've been with them in December, I moved all of my clients there. And the best thing is that they sat there, they took the time to answer all of our questions and everything. And that goes right into the software. So if you do use them, there is a chat button. They literally answer everything. There's a community that answers whatever you need. Um, and I think 
every month since I've been with you, anytime I've ever asked for a feature, like in a month or two, it pops up or a week or two. Sometimes they're like, well, let's get on a call and tell us what you need. And they're like, well, that's coming out next week. That just came out last week. I swear everything I've ever needed has come out because uh, lots of software, they don't listen. Anchor just cares and they listen and they just love the product. I know I'm a nerd because I like it too, but when you're working with a software, like most of us work with QuickBooks, they don't care about anything we have to say. They're going to chug along. They're going to do their thing. They they're going to keep care, going. They're just like a big organization. They have Yeah, they're their, so big. Their yeah. clients are, are, you know, they, they're a public company. They have. Yeah, they're huge. But I do think, I do think we, yeah. first of all, we have now a monthly meetup where we're going to um, where we all meet and brainstorm new product features together. And I encourage you to sign up and join. That's happening this month. But we really do love working with our users because at the end of the day, we build Anchor um, for all service providers so that everyone can just um, focus on, on maximizing revenue and just have a very safe financial foundation to grow and the way to achieve a safe financial foundation is to remove any human errors <laughs> you can from the way and any manual work and just let the computers do the things for you so you can grow. Um, and I think that's always been our goal and it's our goal because we were there too and we're business owners too. So that's been really important. And thank you so much though for, for that feedback, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Um, I think we're almost out of time. Um, but I do encourage you to reach out to me, to reach out to Sarah. You can add us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, ask us any questions. I think if there's one thing to take away from this conversation today, it's not necessarily about Anchor, but it's more about automate whatever you can, outsource whatever you can. There's no reason for you to spend your very valuable time on doing things that you know, that can be automated and produce you money. So billing automation, if you automate it end to end, you'll be saving a ton of costs on additional software, but also on your time and on many other things. So I really hope this session was valuable for you. Sarah, any last words? I just wanted to say, when since we talked about um, outsourcing, um, if you are looking for any bookkeepers to help you with your business, reach out. I can definitely facilitate oh, yeah. that. Sarah yeah. has the best connections for outsourcing. Really reach out to her. Sarah, share your email in the chat, please. Oh, yeah. So reach out to me for anything. I also help with um, any coaching, um, backend setup, all of those things. So if you're looking to find clients, um, serve your clients, scale your clients. If you're looking to build your team, what is con what do contractors look like? All of those things. Reach out to me. Um, I'm all over the place. I'm helping people all the time so I can help you too. Yeah. And I'll say that we're going to be, me and my team, we're going to be a QuickBooks Connect. So if you're there, please email me and let me know. I want to meet you in person. We're going to be a deeper weekend. We're going to be at um, the Hector's events about the subscription model in Miami in October. So we're all over the place. We're a small team, but we get places. <laughs> um, and we'd love to meet you in person. We love, love, love meeting bookkeepers and accounting professionals, and we're just here to help. So anything we can do to help you grow and succeed, please reach out and let us know. Um, and I think we're going to wrap it up. One second, one chat came through. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. And thank you for everyone who joined. And thank you, Dave and the successful bookkeeper community. We love you guys so much. And thank you for bringing value to our um, business and to our lives with amazing webinars. Um, thank you all. We'll speak soon. Sarah, thank you. You're amazing. Yeah, it was fun. We'll speak soon. Bye.